After working two years in service sector company, finally, I decided to move to the product-based company. Having solved more than 450 lead code problems, I was pretty sure that I can crack any coding interview. So I decided to apply to my dream company called Google. During the Google coding interview process, I got failed in it. I really felt bad about it. Having solved more than 450 lead code problems and still I was unable to crack the coding interview. But looking at it without any regret, there are certain things that I learned and I want to share with you. Today, I'm going to explain all those things that you should avoid in any coding interview. So stay till the end of this video to get the best out of it. Just in case if you are new to the runtime error, do subscribe the channel to get the more research information on data sectors and interview process. So now, without any further delay, let's start the video. Point number one, think out loudly. During the coding interview, when I was given a problem, I started solving the problem in my mind. And nearly after five minutes, interviewer asked me to think out loudly. Finally, though I was able to solve the problem, there was one thing that I was lacking and it was a communication skills. And this is what we often do during the practice session of data structures or whenever we are giving any coding contest, we normally think in our mind. At the end, during a time of feedback, interviewer told me one of the most important thing that is whenever you are giving any coding interview, make sure that you are expressing every single thoughts to the front person. Even if you are thinking of the smallest of logic or smallest of approach, express your thought to the interviewer. Now say for example, you want to sort the array, tell them that now I'm thinking to sort the array. Also at the same time, tell them why you are thinking to sort the array because it's not just about to judge you based on whether you are able to solve the problem or not. It's all about the way you approach the problem, the way you choose the data structures and the most important thing is what are your thought process in order to solve this problem? Because these are the most important thing rather than judging you based on whether you are able to solve the problem or not. Now the biggest question comes in, how can I practice this think out loud method? Now, let me tell you one thing that most of the Google interviews happen on the Google Docs. So open the Google Docs, write down a question on it and start solving a problem on the Google Docs. But at the same time that, imagine that you are solving and explaining this code to your friend and express every single thought loudly, imagining that you are explaining it to your friend. Believe me that this habit will take you to the different level in any coding interview. Point number two, dry run and then say, I'm ready with my code. During interview, I was given two coding problems out of which one was really easy. So I solved that problems in a really hurry state and said, I'm ready with my code. As soon as I said, I'm ready with my code, interviewer gave me one edge case and asked me to dry run on it. And for this test case, I needed to make some certain changes in my code. At the end, I realized one thing that whenever we write the code, before saying that I'm ready with my code, just stop, hold on and first, Take two or more example and dry run on it. Also at the same time, while during a time of dry running it, explain to the interviewer that how your code is working for it. And most important thing to note here is that whenever you are taking the example to dry run on it, make sure that you are taking at least one edge case or corner case because this gives us a confirmation about your code is ready and working for every single edge case and corner case. Interestingly, this creates a surety before submitting your problem. And most importantly, this helps us to avoid to make in certain changes in our code every now and then because changing our code for every single test cases showcases the bad coding skills. Point number three, be mindful on time. Your coding interview will be of 40 to 45 minutes in which we need to solve the two problems. And most important thing to note here is that we are not just supposed to solve the two problems. We need to take that problem from brute force to the better solution and from better to the optimal solution. Normally what happens is during the learning phase of data structures, we never think of time. We do solve the problem, but we take our own time. And this habit really kills us during a time of coding interview. So it means that we need to solve one problem in 20 to 22 minutes. So before we appear to any coding interview, make sure that you have a strong practice on solving the problem in a given time. In order to practice this, make sure that whenever you are practicing or solving question, Keep a timer and check whether you are able to solve the problem in 20 to 25 minutes. If you are not able to solve any problem in 20 to 25 minutes, it means that you are not ready for the interview. Point number four, code quality. Being a programmer and being a professional programmer, there is a subtle difference in between them. Over a period of time, I realized one of the most important thing is writing the code which other people can understand 
is more important than writing the code which is understandable to you because this gives us a more clarity during a time of debugging or if any other person is asked to make some certain changes in my code normally what happen is whenever we write the code we should avoid naming the variable or the functions by any random name make sure that you are choosing a name for your variable or the function depending upon the problem which you are solving say for example you are solving the problem called search in a rotated sorted array so don't just give a name to your function as a search find sol function avoid this naming for your functions instead use the name of your function as search in a rotated sorted array so this gives more clarity about what this function is about what is work of this particular function is about so i hope so that this video has made some sense to you and added a little bit of extra benefits in your coding journey just in case if you are new to the runtime error do subscribe the channel to get more updates on data structures and improve your coding journey till then have a happy coding